Photoshop is expensive. Hello, it is Alternative August. I know it's kind of a stupid name, but it's the best I can do. And both words start with the letter A. That makes it an, uh, an alliteration. Totally knew that. But I think the idea is a good one. I've been looking at a lot of hardware and looking at a lot of software and people are often asking me, hey, Photoshop looks cool, but what else can I use? Hey, this Cintiq looks good, but it's expensive. What else is out there? So this week we are gonna be talking about the alternatives to Photoshop. What is out there? How do we use it? And is it good? So let's start with the direct competitors. What apps do pretty much everything that Photoshop does because Photoshop can be used for a lot of different things. The first one I wanna talk about here is GIMP, G-I-M-P, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. The name is an acronym with an acronym in it, which I think says something about the usability of the app as a whole. If you have watched this channel for a long time, you know that I hate GIMP with a screaming fire of passion that cannot be quenched. That's a little extreme. GIMP is best known for being free. You don't have to pay for it. If you need to resize an image, GIMP is for you. If you need to just crop an image, GIMP is for you. If you feel the need to drive your head through a solid brick wall, GIMP is for you. Okay, I'm gonna stop picking on GIMP now, but it's just so much fun. First off, I think the main reason I don't like GIMP is because it's so slow. If I have a decent sized canvas, which in any other program would handle it fine, and I use the paint bucket tool, it takes a long time to fill that color in. It's a solid color. Even with eight gigs of RAM dedicated to the program itself, it's still slow. But GIMP can do a lot of the things that Photoshop does. It's just not quite as smooth. For example, you can resize a layer, but you have to know what you want to resize it to. You can't just drag it and resize it that way like you can in most programs. You can't do little things that you get used to. For example, you can't move multiple layers at a time or select multiple layers at a time. If you want to use the eyedropper tool to grab a color, you have to go to the layer that the color is on in order to grab it. So overall, GIMP does a ton of things, but it doesn't do them particularly efficiently. If you're used to Photoshop, you're gonna find GIMP very frustrating, but there are a lot of people out there, and I'm sure they'll let me know in the comments, that really like GIMP. And I think if you start with GIMP and you know nothing else, you'll get used to that flow and you'll never know what you're missing. How's that background fill color coming in? Ugh. Affinity Photo. Now, if you're looking for something that really competes with Photoshop on every level, I think Affinity Photo is about as good as it gets. It is a very good program, and it is a fraction of the price of full-blown Photoshop. If you're going to pay for all of the Creative Cloud suite, you are going to pay $50 a month for the rest of your life that you want to own Photoshop. This is a one-time purchase of $50, and you own Affinity Photo, and it can do some amazing things, especially when you get into the area of photo manipulation. It's also not a slouch when it comes to illustration. You can create custom brushes. There are a lot of options there and there's a lot you can do. It is a fully featured painting program as well. Also, if you like doing graphic design, you know, website layouts, app layouts, that sort of thing, you can even do that sort of thing in Affinity Photo as well. That's something else that Photoshop's used for a lot. So yeah, Affinity Photo really is probably the best Photoshop alternative out there. If you're on a Mac, another one that's really worth checking out is called Pixelmator. It's only $30 and it is a very close Photoshop clone. All the tools are in the same place. Everything kind of functions the same way. Uh, Affinity uh, Photo tends to be a little bit different. They have their own idea of how to use things. So if you're used to Photoshop, there might be more of a learning curve. Whereas with Pixelmator, there's really no learning curve at all. You can jump right in and a lot of the tools just make sense. The one thing I would say is uh, I have this program. I've never really loved drawing in this program. Can't quite put my finger on why. It just doesn't feel like it's for that. Um, it does everything pretty well, uh, but the drawing aspect of it just, mm, I think there's just better stuff out there. If you're looking for Photoshop alternatives that are kind of more in the drawing vein instead of the photo manipulation vein, I would look at something like Clip Studio. Clip Studio used to be called Manga Studio. Ah, I see that look on your face. Now you've heard of it. Manga Studio is really popular amongst comic artists. I used to use it all the time. I've used it less and less over recent years. Uh, one of the things that I have always loved about it is it has kind of, on a lot of its inking brushes anyway, like a brush smoother. Phenomenal brush smoothing on this thing. It makes your lines look super crisp and clean, and I haven't dove too deep into the details of how adjustable that smoothness is on the brushes, but there's no delay to it. You're not like dragging it like you do with some brush smoothers. It just kind of does it automatically, and it seems to do it really well. 
in theory, Clip Studio costs $50, but usually you can find it on Amazon for like half that. There's also like a professional grade EX version of it that costs about $200. I just get the standard $50 one. That's the one I have. I've never missed any of the like uh, the extended features that you get on the larger one. Most of that stuff is built for people who are doing like a graphic novel or a full-fledged comic book. They're like page organization features and that sort of thing. I haven't gotten into that stuff too much, so I haven't really missed any of those features. Now, if you like the idea of Clip Studio but are completely broke, you need to check out Medibang. Medibang is completely free, and you might know it by another name, Fire Alpaca. <laughs> Um, that was a goat. Eh, close enough. One of the great things about Medibang Alpaca is that it's available on any platform, including like the iPad and any Android tablets, and including Mac and PC, of course. And as a bonus, if you have an iPad and you're working on the desktop, you can save your files, transfer them both. They have like cloud settings as well, so you can do that sort of thing. The only downside of Medibang is if you sign up for the cloud service, they'll send you promotional emails that are in Japanese. I can't read those things to save my life, but I bet there's some pretty cool features they're trying to tell me about. While we are on the topic of free, you should definitely check out an application called Krita. The people who use Krita and let me know about it down in the comments frequently love Krita, and I can see why. I haven't used it too much myself, but what I have seen from it, uh, it is a very robust program, has a lot of phenomenal brushes, has a lot of good stuff going for it, and it's free. Krita also happens to be one of the most requested reviews I get on this channel. I have not gotten around to it, uh, partially because I have a lot of other things I want to review first, but also because it's free, so I don't know if I really need to review a free app. It's free. Go download it, see if you like it. While I'm here, I want to mention a couple browser-based painting apps. The two that I tried out were Sumo Paint and Pixlr. Did I say that right? I totally said that right. I think they're interesting. They do have some limitations. You know, I didn't play with them so much to, to try this out, but I didn't notice like any brush pressure or, or that sort of thing, but they do a pretty good job of replicating a lot of Photoshop's features, you know, inside a web browser. So if you're just looking for something basic that'll kind of get the job done where you don't want to download a big app that'll sit on your hard drive or anything, might be worth checking those out. In my travels, I found many, many more, but these were the ones I think personally could actually replace Photoshop for you in some way or capacity. And plus, they range in price and quality. So, you know, if you're don't have a lot of money to spend if you're a college student or something like that, you know, go ahead and check out the free ones. If you do have money to spend and you want something that's more fully featured, like Affinity Photo, you know, definitely check something like that out. There's a lot of others out there that I ran into in blog posts, but some of them just haven't been updated in like two, three, four, five, six years, a long time. So they work for the people who are using them, but I didn't think they were up to date enough to include on this list. So what is your favorite? Which one did I miss or what features in the ones that I listed did I miss? Let me know down below in the comments. As always, you can hit me up on Twitter. That's all I've got for today. I'll see you guys in a couple of days.